Hey guys, what's up, Roman here from Tech Guides, and in this video, I will show you how to set up a ZFS RAID 10 volume on Ubuntu 2004. Now, before jumping right into the video, I probably have to explain first what ZFS is, what its advantages are over any other file system, and finally, I should probably also explain why I'm interested in setting up a RAID 10 volume on my home server. Now, basically, the reason why I need such a setup is actually pretty simple. So for my YouTube videos, I record on the Lumix GH5 at 60 FPS and 4K. So that means whenever I do record videos for YouTube, I'm accumulating huge amount of files that I need to store somehow. Now, traditionally, I used to store all of my YouTube related projects on my PC that you can see right there on a six terabyte hard drive. Obviously, working like that is super risky. And because I also didn't have a backup, if that hard drive would have died, then all of my YouTube projects would have been gone just like that. Finally, because that 6 terabyte hard drive also slowly started to run out of space, it was really high time to think about a new solution that was more reliable and that allowed me to expand the storage in the future. So with that in mind, I set out to find a new solution to store my YouTube related projects. And since I was in the process of building my new home server anyways, I thought that I could simply store all of my files on my home server and then I would kind of access them through the 10 gigabit switch that I have on my local machine. Now, at this point, I should probably also mention ZFS and talk about what it actually is and how it's useful in this situation. Now, ZFS or the Zeta file system really is just another file system like XT4, um, NTFS or what have you. Um, but it is actually a little bit different from these other file systems as it's not only a file system, but it's also a volume manager, um, which basically means in layman's terms that you can set up a file system that actually spans over multiple physical hard drives. Now, when you do that, you create what is called a ZFS pool that basically acts like one huge hard drive where you can store all of your data. Now, another huge difference between ZFS and basically any other file system out there is the fact that ZFS was developed with data integrity in mind. Basically, whenever you save a file in ZFS, you also save a checksum that can be used to verify the integrity of the file that you have saved. So whenever you access that file, the checksum is also read and compared to the file. And if the file doesn't match up with the checksum, then the file can actually be repaired. Basically, ZFS is a really cool file system and there are many, many more advantages that I didn't have time to touch on in this video. Um, but if you're interested in what ZFS has to offer, then definitely do check out this fantastic overview video in the card right now. Now, while ZFS is great and all, if you want to implement ZFS on your own home server, you should definitely make sure that you also have ECC memory. This is basically not a must if you use CFS, but if you want to have data integrity on the storage side, then you should definitely also make sure to have data integrity on the memory side, because many of the ZFS related metadata from your storage pool is actually stored in memory. So if you have any hiccups happening in memory, then your entire pool can become useless because you have some faulty data in your memory. Now, as I previously mentioned, CFS also allows you to implement RAID volumes on your system. However, in this video, I'm not going to show you how to set up a RAID C1 or RAID C2 volume, but instead we're going to look at how to set up a mirror VDEF in order to save our files. Now, basically a ZFS mirror works pretty much like a RAID 10 volume in that you have, for example, four hard drives, two of which are mirrored. So all of the data that is written to this hard drive is also written to the other hard drive. And then basically in ZFS, you're actually striping that data onto two other hard drives, uh, which allows you to actually read twice as fast as if you were to read to just one hard drive. On the other hand, if you now want to read a file from your mirrored ZFS volume, you can read from each individual hard drive in parallel, which essentially increases your read speed by the amount of hard drives that you have in your ZFS mirror. So in my case, writing onto my pool is gonna be twice as fast as writing onto a single hard drive and reading from it is gonna be four times as fast as reading from a single hard drive. Also, because CFS is cleverly using RAM as kind of an intermediate storage medium and then just reads, writes it onto the hard drive from there, I'm actually gaining super fast transfer speeds from my PC onto my server, as I will show later in this video. So as you can see, all of the requirements that I have for such a network attached storage 
um, that is, data integrity and fast access speeds are perfectly satisfied using a ZFS mirror. So in today's video, I will show you how to check your new hard drives for any potential errors, how to create a ZFS RAID volume, how to install Samba on your home server that allows you to access the files from your home server over a network share on Windows, and finally, what the transfer speeds are from my PC to the server and vice versa over my 10 gigabit Ethernet switch. And with that slightly longer preamble out of the way, let's finally hop into how to install ZFS on your home server. Now on Ubuntu, ZFS is actually coming pre-installed, so you don't have to do anything in order to use it. The first thing we want to do before we set up a ZFS mirror on our server is to actually prepare our hard drives. So in this case, I did already insert four new hard drives into my home server, and then upon typing sudo fdisk-l, I can inspect if all of the drives are correctly recognized by Ubuntu. Now the first thing that I usually like to do is to test if there are any bad blocks on the new hard drives that we just bought. If this would be the case, then we can simply send them back to the seller where we got them from, and hopefully get some new drives that don't have any bad blocks. Now if you don't do this, then we might actually only recognize that there are issues with our hard drives very very late in the uh, life period of the drive, upon which point returning them would be very annoying. So to test for bad blocks, first look for the sector size of your new hard drives, and then type in sudo badblocks-b, the sector size that we saw before from sudo fdiskl dash sw, followed by the disk identifier. Note that this will delete any data on your disks. Now, depending on the size of the drive that you got, this can actually take quite some time. Um, in my case, I think it took about a day or one and a half days to finish with one drive. So just be patient and repeat this for each of the drives that you want to set up in your RAID ZFS mirror. Now, in order to actually bind your disks in a ZFS pool, um, what I usually like to do is to create an alias for each drive. So like a 1, 2, 3, 4 for the four drives that I have in this situation, instead of actually specifying the exact serial number of the drives that I'm using. Now, the reason why you shouldn't just use the regular disk identifier, so the dash dev dash sda, sdb, etc., is that if you replug your disks and you reboot your computers and the, and, and the drives are remounted, then in some cases it can happen that the disks actually have different identifiers, which would be very, very bad if you have ZFS running on your system. So to create such an alias, go to slash etc slash ZFS, type in sudo nano vdef underscore id dot conf, and now create the aliases to the serial numbers of your disks. To do this, type in alias1, followed by the location of the disk IDs, so this would be slash dev slash disk slash by ID, then the disk identifier, and repeat this process for each of the drives that you want to set up in your ZFS mirror. Save the file by pressing Ctrl X, Y and Enter and type in sudo udef adm trigger. Now when you change directories to dev disks and change into the by vdef directory, you can see that our four new aliases properly show up. And that's it, with that our drives are now ready to be bound into a ZFS pool. To create a mirror pool, type in sudo cpool create, then some pool name, I'm gonna call mine yt pool, followed by mirror01, O2, which means that the drive 1 will be mirrored in drive 2, and mirror 0304, which means that drive 3 will be mirrored in drive 4. Now if you do run into any issues, also make sure that you add the dash f flag after the z pool create command. And that's it, it's actually that simple to create a ZFS mirrored pool. You can inspect your newly created pool by typing in z pool status. Also, you can type in zpoollist-v to get some more information on your pool's capacity. Now, the next thing that you should definitely also do is to set up compression on your new pool. This is actually a super important step, because depending on the files that you're saving in your new ZFS pool, you can actually save significant amount of disk space in ZFS. Obviously, the compression is going to be lossless, meaning no data is going to be altered. So, to set up compression on your ZFS pool, type in sudo zfs set compression equals lz4 followed by the name of your zfs pool. You can get the compression ratio of your pool by typing in zfs get compress ratio followed by the name of your zfs pool. 
As you can see, mine is at 1 because I currently don't have any data in my ZFS pool. Now let's copy a file, for example, the next cloud installer onto my new ZFS pool. And as you can see, the compression value has increased. Now, finally, before you go ahead and save data into your ZFS pool, you should really make sure to create a subfolder in your ZFS pool and not just save files in the root directory of your new ZFS pool. So create a new subdirectory by typing in sudo zfs create the name of your ZFS pool slash the name of the folder that you want to create. Finally, go into the root directory of your server and change ownership for your new ZFS pool. You can do this by typing in sudo chown dash capital R, your username colon username, followed by the name of your ZFS pool. And that's it, you can now start to safely copy over files into your new CFS mirrored pool. Now, before moving on to the last part of this tutorial, where I'm gonna show you how to set up Samba and how to incorporate your ZFS pool into Windows, I'd also like to talk about how to recover from errors when your Z pool gets degraded. So in my case, I recently had a power cut, after which the health of my Z pool degraded. You can see this by typing in sudo Z pool list or sudo Z pool status. As you can see, my first drive of mirror 0 was degraded as well as the second drive in mirror 1. Now in order to fix this, the first thing that I did was to run a scrub. What this basically does is it tests the integrity of all the files in your Z pool. Now this took about a day or so to finish, but no errors have been reported. So this is a good sign, it basically means that the degraded status isn't because some data is actually lost in my pool. So all I really had to do was to type in sudo zpool clear, the error message was deleted and the pool was back on healthy status. Alright, and with that it's time to install Samba on our server in order to map our ZFS pool into Windows. You can check whether Samba is already installed on your server by typing sudo service smbd restart. If you're getting this error, then you first have to install Samba on your server. To do this, type sudo app-get install Samba. Now the first thing we want to do is to generate a Samba user and password, which we can then use to access our files from Windows on our Linux machine. To do this, type sudo smbd passwd a followed by the username that you want to use. Now in my case, I'm simply going to use the same username and password combination that I use on Windows, which will make binding the ZFS pool on Windows much easier, because you don't have to enter any credentials. Next, we're going to modify the Zamba configuration by typing sudo nano slash etc slash samba slash smb.conf. Go all the way to the bottom and create a new share by typing in any name that you like in square brackets. In my case, I'm going to call my share YouTube share, which points to our ZFS path. So slash YouTube pool slash data is available, has a user called Roman is not only read-only, should be browsable, public, as well as writable. Save the file by pressing Ctrl X, Y and Enter and restart Samba using sudo service smbd restart. Now in order to permanently mount the ZFS pool in Windows, open the file explorer, right-click on this PC, click on map network drive, select any drive letter that you like to, and enter the IP address of your home server, followed by the name of the Zomba share. Finally, make sure to tick reconnect at sign in. And depending on whether or not you actually use different credentials for your Zomba username than what you have on your Windows username, you also have to select use different credentials. Press enter and voila, as you can see, you can now successfully access your ZFS mirror. Now, in case you're getting this network error, you probably also have to set up your home server to allow Samba to access your server through your firewall. To check if you have UFW active, type sudo UFW status, which will tell you if you have your firewall enabled. If you did follow my how to secure your home server video series, which is currently linked in the card right now, then you most likely do have this firewall enabled. So in order to allow Samba to access your server, type sudo UFW allow 445. And that's it, your network drive should now be accessible. 
Now with this setup and a 10 gigabit Ethernet switch, I'm actually peaking out at around 9 gigabits per second, which is almost 1 gigabyte per second of file transfer speeds when copying files from my PC to my home server. So if this isn't absolutely astonishing, then I don't know what is. But with that, we got to the end of today's Ubuntu 2004 server tutorial. In the next video in this series, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up and install Max Cloud Hub. So if you're interested in that kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that like button if you liked this video, hit dislike if you didn't. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.